Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Kidman at Middleburg United Methodist Church. Thank you for being here and for watching this video with us. We love being here with you, mm -hmm. and we want to teach you a whole new lesson today. What is this lesson going to be about, Shannon? It's going to be about rules. Oh, oh, wonderful. More rules. Okay. And a specific set of rules, Harry, because today we're starting a whole series about the Ten Commandments. Oh, those rules. The ones that came from God? Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes more sense now. Yeah. I mean, we know rules are everywhere, right? When you go to class on the first day of school, what is the first thing the teacher normally does? Gives you a whole long list of things that you can't do. She lays out the rules for the class, right? Mm -hmm. Teachers spend most of the first day of school introducing themselves and then going over their expectations for you, right? Teachers tell you what the rules are for things like homework and classwork. And they also lay down the rules for behavior in the classroom. And then they let you know what the consequences are going to be if you break those rules. Of course. But teachers aren't the only people with rules and expectations. Mm -hmm. When you sign up for a sports team, the first thing that coaches go over are the rules. There are rules of the game to be followed. But coaches also have their own rules for practice. There are rules for being on time to games. And there are even rules for keeping your equipment tidy and your uniform. There are mm -hmm. rules for taking care of everything. Thinking about it, you know, Harry, board games have rules. They do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Playgrounds have rules, too. Yeah. And video games have rules. Mm -hmm. I think the most rules, though come from parents yeah parents have a ton of rules and they're constantly making new ones too everything from make your bed in the morning to no slime on the couch <laughs> that's probably a good idea actually rules may seem restrictive sometimes but in the end rules are there for a reason mm -hmm. the rules of the house are to teach you how to take care of your things and help with the chores, as well as how to respect other people. No hitting, no slime on the couch, clean your own dishes, put your toys away. All these rules have a purpose and a reason. And when you're in a classroom, the classroom rules have a purpose too. They keep the class in order so that everyone can learn. Board games, video games, and sports their rules help us all to play fair. We may not always like rules, but rules would not be made if there wasn't a good reason. Yeah. I guess you could say that. <laughs> well, today we're starting this series where we will look at the rules that God gave to his people, Israel. After setting them free from slavery, God gave the Israelites 10 simple rules that taught them the difference between right and wrong. These rules are called the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. and they are the foundation for living a good life. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go pull out our Bibles again. You're always going to need your Bible for something, so go ahead and get it out. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 20. It's near the very beginning of your Bible. Not a lot of pages before Exodus. So, Exodus chapter 20, chap chapter 20, verse 1 through 21. And remember, if you need to pause the video to go get your Bible, feel free to do that. And now you should have your Bible. Chapter 20, verse 1. I'm going to go all the way to 21. Here it says, And God spoke all these words. 
I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall make for yourself and you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day, is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servants, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you, so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. God wanted to set his people on the right path. Never before had he given specific directions on how to live a good life, but here, for the first time, we see God giving his people ten commandments that will help them know the difference between right and wrong. God gave us these commandments to teach us how to make wise choices, but there's a bigger reason for these rules. They teach us how to love God and how to love other people when we learn the Ten Commandments, not only will we learn to make good choices, we'll learn how we can spread God's love to the whole world. So, rules are pretty important, huh? Yeah, I guess they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, just think, what would happen if a team didn't play by the rules when they were out on a baseball field mm -hmm. or on a football field? Or even on a basketball court. You'd have people running circles around the bases just saying, Hey, how many times can I run around and get points for my team? The, thi the <laughs> game would get really frustrating, I mm. think. And also, it would probably end up coming to a halt because of penalties, right? Mm -hmm. The fans might get upset. Well, same thing would go for, say, if someone was playing Monopoly and was cheating. Nobody wants to play with a cheater, mm -hmm. and soon the game would be over. So God set those rules in stone to teach us how we should love him and how should we should respect other people. Mm -hmm. The first five commandments all have to do with loving God. Mm -hmm. We need to keep him first, honor his name. 
we need to respect our day of worship. And then the last six commands all have to deal with loving others. First our parents, and then everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, when we follow the Ten Commandments, we will show respect to other people and their things. We will honor God with our words and actions. We will honor our parents. And yes, we will keep ourselves out of trouble. More importantly, following the Ten Commandments shows we love God and we love other people. And when we love other people, we show them that God loves them as well. Every game has rules. Every home has rules. Every classroom has rules. The Ten Commandments, then, are the rules for life. Mm -hmm. They teach us right and wrong. They guide us in making choices. And they show us how to love God and our neighbor. So, let's commit to learning the Ten Commandments so that we can play fair in life, do the right thing, mm -hmm. and show God's love with everyone. Mm -hmm. So, continue to join us for the next series series for how many weeks we're gonna go for 12 weeks this is the first so join us for all of our next lessons talking about the ten commandments yes okay guys so as we're getting ready to, to keep going on in this 12 lesson series let's think of some questions and answers that goes along with the Ten Commandments as a whole. How about you start us off, Harry? Okay, here's the first one. Who created the Ten Commandments? Think about it. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So, Think about who talked to Moses when he went up on the mountain. God created the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. Here's the second one. What do the Ten Commandments teach us about right and wrong? Ooh, this one you got to think a little bit for. Mm -hmm. hmm. One, three, two, one, zero. I think the most important thing the Ten Commandments teaches us about right and wrong is that to understand right and wrong, we need to focus our eyes on God and love God. When we start with loving God, then we also learn that we should love other people too. And going down the Ten Commandments, like you showed us earlier, that's really what everything wraps up into. Right and wrong starts with Loving God and loving others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Shannon, I got one more for you. Okay. How do the Ten Commandments teach us to love others? Mm -hmm. Think. Mm -hmm. Well, as we talked about earlier today, the first of the commandments go through and t teach us how to love God. Mm -hmm. And then 6 through 10 tells us how to love others. It tells us how to treat them. Mm -hmm. And it also gives us instructions for living the right way and the fact that how we interact with each other and how we should behave. Mm -hmm. And when we do those things, then other people will see God's love through us. Mm -hmm. And we also don't hurt each other either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, guys, to sum it all up, God freed the Israelites from Egypt, and he made them his people. And then he gave them the Ten Commandments so that they would know the difference between right and wrong. If we follow these same Ten Commandments today, we will honor God, loving him, and loving others. All right, so the bottom line is the Ten Commandments teach us right from wrong. And our memory verse today comes from Psalm 19.7. Now, this is a really long memory verse. And just to give you a heads up, 
we're actually going to have the same memory verse again next week mm -hmm. to give you some more time to work on it. But again, Psalm 19, 7, and it says, The law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new strength. The laws of the Lord can be trusted. They make childish people wise. And my personal suggestion, since we are going to be working on this for a couple weeks, maybe try to half it. Take the first two sentences this week and the next two sentences um, the following week. So remember, the law of the Lord is perfect. It gives us new strength. So let's pray as you go about the rest of your day. Remember to say this prayer after me and let's give God the glory in it. Dear God, dear God, thank you for the Ten Commandments. Thank you for the Ten Commandments. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a good week.